Hi, my name is Dr. Omi and I'm a dentist. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about an associateship position that I had just about four years after I graduated dental school. I feel like it's helpful for me to share my experience so that way you can learn what it's really like to be in a dental associateship. Hopefully use some of my tips and strategies so that way you can learn how to protect yourself and make the best of every opportunity that you get. So you're watching part 10 of a series. Go back and watch parts one through nine. There's a bunch of awesome stories and then come back here. Okay, associateship number 10. I gotta say, my first four years out of dental school have been nothing short of a while. So many highs, so many lows. I'd say more lows than highs, but hey, here we are. My advice to get through this type of hardship, you gotta just keep moving forward. The path may not always be clear, but as long as you're moving forward, you're gonna be just fine. Okay, so I finished my 90 day notice period and I'm looking for an associateship. This was one of the easier associateship positions to find because this owner was actually my first Clearliner consultant client. I was able to help him go from zero to 25 cases in his first two months, and he was looking for an associate, and I was looking for a job. It was a great match. This was definitely the most unique opportunity I have ever had just because of the way it was structured. He had bought the practice earlier that year, and he was looking to bring on an associate to help him really turn things around. The practice had plenty of patients and a huge opportunity to grow. I knew this because I asked to see the data of the patient demographics, the treatment that was done, the number of recall exams, and other metrics to help gauge the status of this practice. His vision for this practice was for me to lead the clinical side and him the admin side and then grow this thing together. We discussed partnership, but we agreed that a profit share model would probably be best and we put it in writing that we would discuss that number after six months of working together. I also signed a formal contract of employment. A lot of dentists fall into the trap of having conversations about partnership in the future, but they never actually get it in writing. This is a carrot that a lot of owners like to dangle in front of associates to get them on board and help them out in the practice. But what happens is down the road, things change and sometimes the owners don't actually want a partnership in the end. This is unfortunate because the associateship loses so much valuable time and effort and energy in helping build a practice that was never theirs. So if partnership is on the table, always get it in writing. This private practice was appealing to me mainly because I was trying to slow down from the corporate hustle. I wanted clinical autonomy and I wanted to be able to come in, lead a team, connect with patients, provide high quality treatment, and go home to work on my Clearliner business. This opportunity was doing just that for me. What I didn't anticipate was how draining it can be to turn around a practice and create new systems. This practice had no systems in place and it was utter chaos. There were no scheduling templates. There was no organization. These are all critical things for efficient work days and they take time to set up. If you're scheduling patients without a template, this is a domino effect into the rest of the day and it leads to chaos, stress, and confusion. A scheduling template is when you have allotted time slots throughout the day for certain procedures. This ensures that the day runs as smooth as possible and there's no surprises. This was the first thing that I implemented and everybody benefited from it. An even bigger challenge in creating systems and scheduled templates was connecting with patients. As you know, I have loads of experience with patients from all over the country. I've seen it all. This practice is filled with so many genuinely nice patients. The biggest thing I noticed is how much they loved their previous dentist. He sounded like a great guy and all the patients missed him. This led to the patients being apprehensive when I walked into the room. I would walk into the room, introduce myself, let them know that I'm here to take care of them and try to, and then I started to try to form a connection with them. I'd do my exam, I'd start diagnosing treatment and then I would talk to them about it. This is where my world turned upside down. There was so much obvious treatment that these patients needed and I wanted to help them. I started off by showing them pictures of their teeth and explaining why things are happening and what we can do to solve it. I let them know that, hey, this is what's gonna happen if we don't do anything and we can control the situation right now to improve the oral health. I let them know what would happen if we did nothing and I gave them options for what we could do to improve the situation. They all nodded their head and they seemed to understand, but nobody scheduled. I thought, what the hell is going on? Am I missing something? A good treatment presentation is not rocket science. It's a formula. I had leaned on mentors in my space and I learned how to talk efficiently and effectively to my patients, but none of it was working. Like they wouldn't even schedule free treatment that their insurance covered. The more that I reflected and analyzed on what was happening, trying to figure out the issue, the more I realized this was a trust issue. When you're speaking to your patients and you're trying to get them accept treatment, they will not accept treatment unless three pillars of trust are accounted for. 
The three pillars of trust that you have to take into account are the treatment, the practice, and you. In this situation, the patients didn't trust any of the three. They didn't trust the practice because the staff was entirely different than what they were used to. They didn't trust the procedure because this was something that was not recommended to them before. The first time they were hearing about these problems was not from the previous dentist, it was from me. Things like a crack in a tooth or a cavity, I would show it to them and they still wouldn't believe me because it's the first time I'm meeting them and I'm telling them about all these problems that they have that in their mind didn't exist six months ago. In this situation, there was only one way to earn trust and that is with time. As long as I'm operating from the goodness of my heart and trying to provide the best possible treatment for my patients, time will build and earn their trust. How much time do they need to trust me? Nobody really knows the answer to that question, but if you start with one recare cycle, that's a good place. One recare cycle is six months. If they come back in six months and the staff is the same, the recommended treatment is the same, and I'm the same, then they will be more willing to move forward with treatment. The only other way that this trust can happen faster is if something in their mouth breaks. Then they come in pain, I get them out of pain, and then they're a patient for life. But I don't want any pain in my patients. That's not the point. Patience is something that I'm having to learn in this unique experience. I'm at month four right now, so let's see what happens. So yeah, things are interesting at this practice. I currently work four days a week. I'm seeing patients, I'm having my proposed treatment get rejected. I'm keeping a smile on my face and I'm being hopeful. This has been a great learning experience for me and I am super grateful for the opportunity. I don't have a full blown review on this opportunity yet because I'm still practicing here. But if there is something that I have learned over the last four years and nine associateships, it's that no associateship lasts forever. That being said, I really hope that this one continues to carry on, but when it ends, I'll have a video just for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drill that like and subscribe button and share it with anyone you think may benefit. You should check out my other videos for dental career advice. Thanks again.